Hello everyone, welcome to episode 69 of this awesome, amazing Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, I talked about grip, so either pen grip or mouse grip, and I think the characteristics of what makes a good one, things like that. And in this episode, this is a very, very special episode because I am going to be talking about confidence, which I think is something that applies to a lot of different aspects of skill expression in general and just i guess being good at things or getting better at things it ties in closely with mindset which is something i talked about in episode 49 so check that out as well if you're interested in that but uh yes before i get into the actual episode i'd like to shout out as usual that i live stream every single day over at twitch.tv so that will be linked in the description but if you want to hang out with me or watch me play this game live or ask me questions anything like that please please stop by say hello and also bonus points if you tell me that you came from this let's play series we will be very very happy to see you there so let's talk about confidence so i think confidence is something that well as i sort of already mentioned is really at the core of i guess like your your capabilities as as a person i think it, it kind of goes outside the scope of just osu as well or like just games but yeah let's see so i think confidence is actually very closely related to mind block which is something i talked about i think in episode 53 but basically to summarize real quick what mind block is basically it's when you stop like stop actually focusing on a pattern and you start just playing by memory of like how you remember the pattern and the problem really arises okay so there's a couple things that happen so for one i think the the big thing that um is where confidence really plays a role is that your memory of a pattern is not only like the pattern itself like objectively but it's also your expectation for how you think you will do on that pattern so when you play a map from memory, i.e. you are mind blocked on it, then not only are you like, okay, I know how this pattern coming up is going to go, but you're like, I know this pattern is going to go and I know that I'm really, really bad at it and I never hit it and I'm mind blocked on it and I'm just going to fail the whole pattern and ah, oh, yeah, it's so frustrating. But I think where confidence really plays a role in that is to some extent sort of breaking that cycle of... Uh, what is it like just being so I, I don't know like having such a low expectation for yourself on a certain pattern and okay so another aspect of mind block that is pretty related as well is that when you so when you're mind blocked on a pattern you are not really focused on it anymore right because you're just kind of playing from memory but because you're not focused anymore you also cannot tell what you messed up on because you're just kind of playing from memory your, your brain's like okay yeah, yeah, I, I know how this pattern goes just trust me trust me i need to pay attention and then you mess up and you're like omg how did i mess up and you just have no idea because you weren't paying attention so in that sense though for fixing mind block it is so so important to watch your own replays because you usually can't tell while you're playing how you actually messed up but yeah, let's see. So there's another idea that sort of ties into confidence as well. And basically, when you're not confident in your ability to play a pattern, you'll end up trying to like sort of play it very consciously or like m with more conscious awareness than like typical patterns. And that can very easily mess you up. So there's this idea called automaticity which I will link a video about it in the description if you're interested. There's actually a really good video about it by Psych of Play, but basically automaticity is like, is it, so the idea I'm trying to get across, like if you are good enough to do something unconsciously and then you try to think about it consciously, then it's actually going to mess you up. Like your brain's going to be like, why are you thinking so hard about this when like I know exactly what I'm doing? And I think lack of confidence is what leads to like sort of breaking that you know automaticity type cycle and that can easily lead to like messing up patterns even more and then that just becomes like very self-fulfilling um, self or like I don't know it's just this endless cycle 
of like you just keep messing up patterns over and over again because you're like not super confident on them and then you're like oh every time i play this pattern i just i just miss on it i just cannot play this pattern and then your confidence gets even worse and then you just start trying to think more and more consciously about that pattern and then um it eventually gets so bad people start to feel like they have unfixable mind blocks um ultimately i think if you so like the way to fix mind block ultimately is just anything that improves your focus again or it gets you to actually pay attention to the map so usually that's stuff like changing your skin um or like flipping your monitor display and people call that the australian method or something <laughs> but there's that there's also what's known as chunking which i described in my episode on reading I, that that number i don't know by memory i think it's like on uh, okay yeah I, i'm not even gonna try it, it'll be linked in the description but there's yeah okay, let's see so okay so let me just talk about other aspects of like confidence and how it relates to breaking skill barriers and like i don't know sort of psyching yourself out of patterns even like outside the scope of mind block so there's this idea called the banister effect and that's basically the idea that okay so the okay so the origin of the term is so it used to be the case that no one had ever run a mile in under four minutes and then this one guy named banister he was the first guy to break the barrier and then right after he broke the barrier then so many other people were like oh gee it's doable it's quite doable and then they also ran the four minute mar uh four minute four minute mile and um Basically, the idea is that like once one person breaks barrier, then like other people sort of realize that it's possible, and then uh, it sort of gets unlocked for a lot of other people as well. And I think in relation to Osu, something if you were around back in like 2019, when uh, Baxe and Idki set the first 1,000 PP scores, like, like within a day of each other, I'm pretty sure. It's stuff like that that's like once someone realizes or like once it's been done already then i don't know like confidence levels sort of start to go up and people are like oh okay that, that's actually something that's doable and uh, i think a very good way to sort of like internalize this even like within your own barriers as a player like let's say you you're really struggling to get your first like 300 pp score and you're like oh my god i cannot break this wall um, actually for me, it was the 200 PP wall. I remember I was stuck there for like months personally, but, um, I think just thinking about it through the lens of like the banister effect, like if, if we take the banister effect as true, um, then the barriers that you're at now, like within like three or four years, that's all sort of going to feel like the norm, I guess. Like nowadays people set 1000 PP scores and... I mean, obviously it's very impressive, but it's nowhere near as like groundbreaking, community breaking as it used to be. Um, like for reference, it used to be insane when people got like 700 PP score uh, or even 600 to be honest. So, but nowadays it's like very, very normal. So obviously, you know, like I mentioned, still very impressive, but point still stands. So having the sort of confidence in yourself that like, even if you're breaking a barrier for the very first time, just sort of understanding that like in a couple years this is actually just going to be the norm and it's not really going to be as big of a deal as you're making it out to be now that actually helps a lot with like sort of artificially i don't know activating the banister effect and sort of breaking past that mental barrier that i think a lot of people put on themselves there's also something that i've lately started to call the freedom dive effect where um Basically, a map is easy, but then... Uh, okay, a map is, like, relatively easy compared to, like, community perception. But then, like, because people think of the map as, like, really difficult, then, like, it becomes more difficult than it really is. And I think Freedom Dive is actually a pretty good example of that because, like, I don't know how many people actually, like, think about this that much, but, like, Freedom Dive is, uh, like, compared to modern maps, it's actually not that bad. Especially with um, Hard Rock when you make it AR-10. But, I mean, regardless, you know, still like a really, really hard map, but hopefully my, I don't know, s someone can like take something from that. But I I've been sort of been calling that the freedom dive effect where like a map is not as hard as it seems, but like just because of the actual map that it is, like it's like 
seen as harder than it really is. So, let's see. I think, wait, let me see. I have um, a couple, wait, oh, okay, okay, yeah. So, sorry, I have a, I have a couple pointers like next to me that I'm sort of referencing to make sure I get all my ideas out. But one thing about confidence is that I think having standards for like what is like quote unquote supposed to be doable is, I don't know, it can be very detrimental to, I don't know, breaking barriers, I guess. I a good way to put it is like, if you want to become like an above average player, then it's going to take an above average mindset as well and like approach to, I don't know, the way you practice, the way you play, things like that. And I think just having a lot of confidence already puts you way up there. You know, a very extreme ex example of a player that just had like a lot of confidence in himself is Rohulk. Like, ever since he was like relatively new to the game, he sort of had this feeling within him that like he had what it took to become a top player. So. Even when he was like not quite at the skill level of top players, like he'd be like, "Oh yes, I'm just you know making my way up to the top, you know where I know I have the potential to be." And honestly, it kind of worked for him because he ended up setting so many like untouchable scores. I feel like with with regards to accuracy. So also, so people like White Cat. <laughs> so I think it was like earlier today or something, but like. White Cat recently uploaded a video on like Happy Song with Hard Rock. That was, that was like 10.2 stars. And he was like, oh dude, this map is doable. Because he like hit the ending jumps or something. <laughs> and in the thumbnail is a screenshot of someone in the Twitch chat saying the ending jumps are not hittable with Hard Rock. <laughs> and then the video is like him playing the map and hitting the ending jumps with Hard Rock. And I think White Cat is just like actually a really good example or like role model in the sense of like confidence and mindset <laughs> there's another clip that's like i think a lot more popular of his that um the, the frosty boy clip on team magma where someone was saying that like i don't know whatever map is like not doable and then like my cat called him out for like having like a really bad mindset <laughs> and then like immediately after saying that he played the map and like fc'd it in one try <laughs> and then he was like see that's what i'm talking about <laughs> And then, oh, oh, I, I have to link that clip. I, I can't even, like, replicate it myself. That clip is, like, I think top three OC clips of all time. That clip is so good. <laughs> but, anyway, yeah, I think people, like, um, honestly, I guess anyone that has broken a lot of barriers in the past, like, you sort of need to have some sense of confidence to not get too in your own head about, like, I don't know, there's a lot of like sports psychology that applies to OSU and, you know, performance psychology and things like that with regards to the way you approach barriers and like, like, I guess, high, high stakes situations. Like if you're setting the first like 2000 PP score, right? Like you can't be so in your head about how like, OMG, oh, this is going to be such a good grand groundbreaking score. It's going to get so many upvotes on Reddit and I'm I'm just going to become so popular and I'm going to become rank one in the whole world. I think you kind of just have to, you just kind of just have to do it, like, especially in the moment. And, you know, uh, sort of applying a lot of the tips that I mentioned earlier as well. I think s s sort of, uh, I don't know, hopefully that sort of makes sense as well. Another thing about confidence is that, and this sort of ties back into the idea of mind block as well, but when so, so when your confidence is really low, it can be really hard to stay focused as well. And that is sort of self-fulfilling, like, you know, confidence, focus, and mind block are sort of like, it's like this endless cycle that can be really, really hard to break if your confidence level is like just overall very low. I think, okay, honestly, I think like when your confidence is really high, even if you're kind of faking it, then it can help a lot to be really, really focused. And uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Another thing, this is, I guess, mostly related to nerves, but I don't know. It's still sort of related to the whole mental side of the game. So I think there's like a, a life hack to nerve control that I think is like, you want your goal with the game to be something that is achievable whether or not you're holding a good score so what i mean by that is like 
if your primary goal, like why you're playing the game, like in, in that current moment, is to get a good score, then obviously if you end up missing, then it's not going to be a good score anymore and then you won't achieve your goal. But if your goal is to like just play the song and you're like, okay, I literally don't care about the score, I just want to play the song. Or if you're playing just to learn the map, then it's like whether or not you actually got a good score, it doesn't change the fact that you're still learning the map, right? Um, or another example is like, I guess just farming local scores in a sense. Like some people, like let's say you're practicing just like breaking that habit of like retry spamming. So you're like, okay, I'm literally just gonna start farming local scores. Then regardless of how the score is, like, I, I don't know. I, I almost want to say like, like me in these Let's Play episodes, like I really don't care about the score that I end up setting. It's just, it's just a matter of like literally just playing through the map. Um, just for the sake of like background gameplay, I guess, but um, basically like regardless of how good your score was, you're still going to achieve your goal of having set a local score by the end of the run. So if, let me see, if those are your sort of primary goals for playing, then you're not really going to be nervous because I think being nervous sort of stems from like the potential that like you won't reach your goal or like achieve whatever goal you have in mind but if it's literally impossible for like as long as you play through the map you're literally going to get a local score like there's nothing to be nervous about there so if like the quality of your score like whether or not it's a good score or not is like sort of an aside for you then it's not you're not really going to get nervous about it right so uh yeah anyway i think just some quick thoughts about confidence that i wanted to share and all of the links and stuff that I mentioned will be in the description as usual. But um, yes, hopefully you took something from this episode, learned something new. And if you have suggestions for future topics, please leave them in the comments because I do read all the comments on these videos. But uh, yeah, with that, also, if you are watching in the future, please check out my channel. I have like a trillion videos at this point. I think you can usually I feel like at this point, if you can, if, if you have an idea in mind, of like, a question that you have or something like that you can just like search in my youtube channel and you can probably find a video about it so um definitely check out my channel watch my other videos and if you are interested please stop by my twitch streams as well because i stream every day would be very happy to have you all stop by say hello hang out with me but uh yes with that i'll see you guys next time